Hi everyone and welcome. So today we're going to talk about WebAssembly. Um, more in particular, we're going to try injecting a um, piece of C code into web pages. Now, mm, when we think about web pages, you, we wouldn't think of uh, C code, right? We would usually think of uh, JavaScript, HTML. Now, while assembly is a language able to give instruction to piece of hardware, WebAssembly instead is an assembly-like language, so it looks like uh, the standard assembly, but instead of talking to the hardware, it's able to talk to this piece of software, which is a portable virtual stack machine. Now, at present, not only all major browsers run some sort of implementation of this VM, but also WebAssembly bytecode can be executed from command line Although WebAssembly these days is pretty much everywhere and it's used to accomplish many different kind of jobs, um, we only be covering three scenarios. Now, uh, although WebAssembly bytecode is more portable than standard assembly and it might look like easier, you wouldn't normally write WebAssembly, you know, using a notepad and stuff like that but mostly WebAssembly should be the compilation target for programming language of choice such as C, C++, C Sharp, Java and much more. Um, this article can help with a bunch of scenarios where WebAssembly might be the best choice. So uh, critical web applications that need to improve their performance. Now that's a good choice, uh, you would immediately think of WebAssembly. Uh, bear in mind that while JavaScript programs are interpreted text files, WebAssembly ones are WASM binary form. Therefore, they are executed instead. So, while JavaScript scripts are pretty huge, because those are text files, and they are parsed, they are interpreted. WebAssembly are small because they're binary and they're not parsed because it's just binary. They're just executed. Number two, scenario number two, uh, you have C, C++ desktop applications, maybe some old application, they need to be converted to web applications. Just because you want to give this application the ability to have a UI, web UI, so you have multiple user, you know, stuff like that. And you want to do it with the least amount of work possible, you know. Rather than uh, having to rewrite everything, you just uh, grab the old code and you plug it into a UI. Last scenario that we're going to be covering today, uh, it's Web applications that need accessing special libraries, for example, C, C++ libraries that cannot be found in other languages more web friendly. So here I develop a C function that is able to do some basic check on uh, email addresses in order to check whether the email is in a valid format. Now I took this function and I translated into JavaScript. So you have do these two pieces of software, uh, they do the same thing, obviously there are differences between these two languages, and we're going to compare uh, the difference in performance. Now in this section we will test the performance of a C function compiled into WebAssembly. Again, you don't write WebAssembly using Notepad. But you, it, WebAssembly is going to be the target of something else. Now, both of these pieces of code, so the C function and the JavaScript function, check whether an email address is in a valid format. Again, in order to produce meaningful results, they do share the same design and they do implement the same algorithm. Now, before proceeding with the code, Bear in mind that while in JavaScript strings are primitive types, in C they are one-dimensional array of chars. Moreover, a C array and a pointer 
have a close relationship as the name of the formula can be considered as the pointer to the first element of the item list so the first element of the array itself right now to run the first example we create an HTML page with an unordered list which is this one um, I put I created 5,000 random email address and I think you should be doing the same you will be populating this by yourself and again you should be using my blog I'm gonna uh, put the link to my blog in the uh, comment section in the description section later on because uh, I use my blog to drop my code and to take notes of my ideas you know the things I want to say just connect to my blog I'm gonna create the post later on and just you know click here so it's easier rather than having to copy the code from the screen which is almost <laughs> impossible now um, to run the first example again we created these uh, HTML pages and I guess you wanna create it uh, you wanna name it as uh, index dot HTML or whatever you wanna call it um, and uh, you're gonna be adding these again this uh, email address by yourself and here um, we're gonna have that our C function and my checker that we're gonna be creating in in a minute is gonna be compiled as a wasm right again the function is gonna log zero to the console the browser console if the email is valid is gonna log a positive number which is an error code to the console when and if the email is invalid it also at the end of the list is gonna print an estimated execution time okay so as you can see again um, this is a JavaScript but this JavaScript is generated by the compiler itself N right now we are testing C code this is very important so don't be don't be fooled by this JavaScript this JavaScript is generated by the compiler again we are testing a C function here not a JavaScript function just take it as it is right now and don't worry about it so once you create this file uh, you're gonna create the email checker.c which is the function the C function don't forget to add this one uh, the header with the mscript and dot h because otherwise it won't compile also don't forget to uh, export and to expose your function because again uh, you might have a multiple function within the same file but you might want to expose and export just one of them and that's the label that allow you to do that um, again you'll find the code on the on the blog and it's fully commented there, there there's so much comments on here that really I'm not going to uh, waste any of your time now the label mscripten underscore keep alive allows us again to export specific function rather than making the whole program available to external calls again this is just a function as you can see we don't have a main here and if you had a main if you and if you wanted to export the main itself you would also need to uh, export the main uh, explicitly exported right uh, now again um, we are not going to once the uh, code the C code is compiled the function is going to be bootstrapped by another the C function is going to be bootstrapped by something else which is the C wrap which also need to be exported at the end of the day when you build you need to specify mcc 
your C file and then this is just a compilation flag that uh, specify the level of optimization that we want and we're gonna talk about this later on then you define the uh, JavaScript because we need that as we see before as we saw before right we need that um, again that's the function that we are exporting we're using the underscore here so we don't uh, mix it up with the one that we have and also again export and runtime methods um, there are many runtime methods that you can uh, export but at the moment we need this one to call the function and that's why we export it so right here as you can see the syrup is calling the my checker and this is saying this is the return type number and this is the um, parameter for the function so syrup is calling this function which return a number and it accept the string okay so that said we're gonna be running the page which basically mean load it into the browser uh, and again we can we can switch different type of optimi optimization uh, 0, 01, zero 02 uh, just check the official documentation um, I just play around with a couple of them and then eventually these are the times that I got so firstly I run with minus OS and I got as a best time the best time was also the first execution 174 milliseconds with 5000 email and then I run the same I recompile my code running with the same emails but I change the optimization minus O3 best time was 172 milliseconds but you know um, as you can see I got also 195 and 211 milliseconds so you know again uh, just have a look at the official documentation and uh, figure out which level of optimization your code needs and I would say you might have to run an actual test and have a look at the the numbers okay now we take care of the JavaScript part um, to test how JavaScript performs in a similar scenario we will need the previous HTML page which is uh, over here of course you're gonna be removing the script section because that will be calling the uh, C program instead you want the new section uh, so you can leave it pretty much anything uh, as it was before so you're gonna be keeping the same email that you put in here all the emails you put in here you're gonna keep it just remove the script and you place uh, you're gonna be placing the new script section and just put it at the end of the file just before the body the, the closing body tag um, and then you're gonna be loading the checkmail.js uh, script which is in here which is uh, the JavaScript script and then you're gonna be uh, doing the usual for each for each another release you're gonna be calling the JavaScript function and that's the JavaScript code uh, you're gonna be seeing you know that this JavaScript is pretty much one on one mirroring uh, the C function um, and you're gonna be running uh, this new piece of code and you're gonna be from the console the console log you're gonna be uh, writing down the timing now if you didn't delete the previous email that would produce even more meaningful results because they will be they will be parsing the same strings 
and then conclusions. Uh, although for better understanding what is actually going on, the reader will have to analyze the performance tab in the Firefox web developer tools or something similar in Chrome. Uh, this test did show that running C code inside web pages is possible, it did work, and also uh, the uh, C program uh, compiling to WebAssembly might perform even, even better than the usual JavaScript uh, file. Therefore, if you are planning to migrate an older desktop application to the web using WebAssembly, now you know that it, it is possible, it can be done, and it will work just fine. Again, uh, I'm going to be dropping uh, the um, blog post URL in the, com in the description section of the video. Uh, so you're going to be able to copy paste all the code, uh, no worries. And I hope this video was useful for you. Um, and uh, I'll thank you for the time you spent on this video. And um, share and like my video if you can. And also share my blog post on my website. And uh, I'll thank you again and uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye.